are back, everybody. Tons of energy coming back Please. out of the yes. commercial yes. break. Yes. Yes. New day yes. in the ring, and they're awake. Oh. Bobby Lashley and MVP. Coming back in eight, seven, six. Tons of energy coming back out of commercial break. Yes. Three. Hello, folks. I know this video is late. Maybe it's not so good out there. I don't know. There used to be a sweet spot. Well, that could also be white, too. Yes. I guess a little bit better. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to the production value of the one, the only Hobo Tom here and the Thunderdome Famous. I'm never going to let anyone live that one down. Thunderdome Famous Hobo Office. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. I know this video is probably way late. Better late than never. Especially with pro wrestling. And I was just busy on Friday. And I worked Saturday. And by the time... We gotta go. And by the time... Well... Saturday night was over. I have to go to work Sunday. So yeah. Life happens, folks. Deal with it. Adult it. But well, enough about that. Let's talk about some... Sma oh, there's gonna be a bonus episode today, too. A very quick... Very terrible bonus episode. But yeah. Let's talk about some SmackDown. I'll say what. It was weird. Because I think there was only like three wrestling matches. Not a tremendously good show. With that being said, I mean, I've definitely. In the past. Well, SmackDown hasn't been bad. Raw's been bad. SmackDown's been trying to hold things together. So, yeah. Oh, and then I'll have some updates for this week, too. Or, yeah. By the time this video is up. Yeah. Let's get into it. Um, SmackDown starts with a Roman Reigns promo. That's okay. Um, that leads us into the first match. I don't know, I'm not going to talk much about promos. <laughs> they all seem to be the same thing nowadays. Uh, Baron Corbin versus Shinsuke Nakamura is the first match. Uh, Big E and what's his face? They changed announcers so often. I honestly am beginning to forget all their names. And it's just one of those things that's just done way too much, way too quickly. I like stability. I like to know this is going to happen this way. Especially if it's something I'm looking forward to. And they're just like, oh, yeah, we're going to change everything. Nah. Again, I still, I, when FTR left and at WWE, I honestly forgot what their names were. I was just being to learn their names too, which is terrible. That's okay. Let's see her better. There we go. Um, so yeah, we had Baron Corbin taking on Shinsuke Nakamura, the Lion of the Night. It's like, you know what? You should never tell jokes about a man's hairline. Terrible. Uh, the, the man's job's affecting his hairline. That's terrible. That's what happens to teachers, okay? Teachers and, like, state people. All that. It's not coming back since I left my state job. But yeah, teachers. That's why all teachers, male and female, just go bald and become alcoholics. Or worse. If you're in Florida, you, like, sleep with their students. Which is bad. Don't sleep with your students, teachers. Enough about that, though. Let's see here. Uh, Baron Corbin versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, this was actually a pretty good match. Uh, Baron Corbin takes control. The pump handle, half and half slant. Uh, gut buster. That's that's always good. Whenever you can just see a guy just straight up lifts another human being up, that's pretty good. Big E and the commentator was great. They were on the couch. They had their feet in, in a foot bath. Living it up and truly enjoying the match like I was. So far, I was drinking red wine and eating pizza. And then I played some old PlayStation 3 video games because I suck at PlayStation 4 video games. Unless they're super simple. Super simple. But yeah, even that I'm bad at, though. Borderlands 3, I can't get past the final boss. But, or almost the final boss, I think. I got him halfway down, which was pretty good, and then I died. Metal Gear... By the, the Phantom Pain, I'm still fighting my second way through the three 
bikini snipers. One day I'll figure it out. But yeah, let me get back to this. Again, that's just straight to see Shinsuke. I um, hit the one, the one legged drop kick. That's okay. Um, followed by a series of kicks. Baron Corbin, man, comes back with a one legged crab. Um, who is this? Oh, yeah. Uh, then Baron, he goes strong style. That was great. However, he posts himself. He does hit the deep six. Oh, and then Baron Corbin goes after Boogenhausen. It's not Eric Boogs. It's Eric Boogenhausen, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boogenhausen, Eric Boogs. Mm, I guess I can have the chant there. That's okay. Uh, let's see here. Yep, so again, Baron Corbin eventually posts himself. He's the deep, deep six on Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, Shinsuke has him in the powerbomb. Or it goes up. Uh, go, Shinsuke Nakamura goes up in the powerbomb position. Locks in the triangle. Uh, there was no Kinshasa. Baron Corbin hits a big clothesline. Then there was finally Kinshasa. Shinsuke Nakamura wins again. Um... Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Uh, Bugenhausen is definitely getting more TV time. He's on more a lot. He does the opening, which is great. But, you know what? It was a solid match. Cheeseburger match. And the Usos? Wait a second. Didn't one of the Usos get arrested for DUI? That's terrible, man. Terrible, man. Game over, man. Game freaking over. Yeah, Aliens is the best. Alien Cube was long feeling. And with British actors, it just seems so dry and monosyllabic, I guess. But yeah. Um, so the Usos there. Say, we have to go find Edge. We're going to take care of this. So good and so bad at the same time. Yeah, it was a. Uh, we had Natalia and Tamina come out to kind of have a match against Chassie Blackheart and Tegan Knox, the girl with the Chinese wizard. I met her. Check out this well, kind of altered pick. Yeah, I had to put it. To, I don't know. I might have the original. But yeah. That's Tegan Knox, also known as Nixon the Oral, the girl with the Chinese wizard. But man, this guy thoroughly shocked when I said, I remember you from WCPW. She's like, you watch that? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, what I did, and I shocked her. Um, Rita Gonzalez at the time was upset, and then Chris, Chris here was just laughing. So that was good. That's always good to see. Um, Chassis and Tegan Knox are actually pretty good. Um, it starts out really the classic wrestling match. Good double teams, quick tags by Chassis and Tegan. Uh, the assisted cannonball was kind of fun to watch. Tamina is, is way too strong for Chassis or Tegan Knox. That was like a terrible slingshot into like somewhat of a super kick. That looked bad. And I don't mind calling it bad. And then, when Shotzi Blackheart did the top rope senton, like, I don't even know if she hit it because of the camera angle. And then you can see them telling Spot. It was so good to see these two. And so bad at the same time. Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox win. So we'll see what happens. I know the main roster is kind of depleted a little bit of his female superstars. There are rumors Becky Lynch is coming back eventually. But of course, and then Sasha Banks is doing too much junk. Um, and Bailey's on the shelf for nine months because she tore... People say it was a knee ligament. I'm guessing for nine months that sounds almost like an ACL ligament. And training. So this match itself is a ham sandwich match.
and there was Megan Morant. Um, I, I forget who she was. Never seen her before. Um, talking with Edge. Then there's the, the typical Boo Sonya Deville moment. Boo. Boo Sonya Deville. And Boo Bailey. Boo. Boo. Boo them all. Um, and then, yeah, because Bailey's out. She's like, yeah, you don't have to wrestle me, but you'll have to find someone. Um, so, Milf Carmella is going to wrestle Bianca Belair. I just drew a blank there. That's not good. Uh, then let Liv come out. Thank you, Liv. Thank you, Liv, Morgan. Because you saved that segment. Liv is in the money in the bank. And boo Sonya Deville for thinking about changing your mind about that. Boo Sonya Deville. Boo. Forever. Wow, that's... There were only three matches here. Disappointing. Um, then it was Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman backstage a little bit. Roman Reigns is like, I'm going to take care of this. Personally. Oh. Next match, we had Seth Rollins versus Cesaro. Um, Kevin Owens is on commentary. Listen, Kevin Owens should, be, should always be on commentary. Seated right next to Samoa Joe. Two best commentators that the WWE has. That's so bad. Um, classic match to start off with. Cesaro is, again, so strong. The top rope cross by looked utterly amazing. On the outside, Seth, Seth Rollins delivered a, a flatliner to Cesaro on the table. That was great. But should be disqualification, mainly based on what Rhea Ripley did, which still doesn't make any sense. Oh, there was no Rhea Ripley. There was no Charlotte. Maybe this was a better SmackDown. Um, yeah, that really missed it when I was taking a shower or, or cutting pizza. And if it was, that's a terrible use of them. Uh, Seth Rollins uh, drops the knee, just like in the WWE video games, which I do have to change for some of my characters. Because they all have the same moves, almost. I only change their signatures. Um, and then, jeez, what a lazy cover by Seth. That looked absolutely terrible. But then we had a good back and forth by both individuals. Cesaro is so good. Seth, Seth has sparks of, of greatness. Um, Cesaro, I, th I think Seth is one of those wrestlers... Whereas he he might not be the best wrestler, but if you put him against the right person, he's gonna be great though. Cause again, it's like the whole thing years ago was Triple H versus Dean Ambrose. That was an amazing match, and then you put Triple H versus Roman Reigns, and you're like, man. So sometimes it's just that weird pairing. If you pair Seth with Cesaro. It's actually a really good match. You pair Seth with other people. Finn Balor. Right, Finn? Um, yeah. It's, it's not so good. Especially when the crowd was literally booing the belt. Really, that belt sucked. That was so, felt so bad for those two. Oh, yeah, Wootube has to come back, too. Maybe that's why. Um... Or is it? So Seth hit, hit the superplex. That was good. Um, Cesaro, or yeah, he hit the he hit the superplex. Oh, Seth um, tried like the what do you do? Yeah, superplex. Cesaro then came back and over the top rope suplex. That was great. The exposed turnbuckle came into play. There was no no pop up no running pop up neutralizer. Instead, Cesaro eats a forearm. Cesaro gets head first into the turnbuckle. Oh, that's never a good thing. Seth, getting very quick. Take advantage of that. Cesaro got, got a little bloody baby. Oh, that was some juice. And that was a straight blade job, and no one saw it. Because that's good. They realized that, yeah, they needed this, and then was a stomp. On a bloody Cesaro, that looked great. Cesaro wins. He's probably off for Money in the Bank, and I'll be making my Money in the Bank predictions 
along with slime anniversary predictions later this week. Yeah, that's right, because I couldn't get to watch that because of work. That's okay. Um, let's see here, slime anniversary. Yeah, that's okay. But yeah, th this was actually great. Um, I think this is going to set up, because then Seth started to talk trash a little bit to Kevin Owens. Kevin was like, yeah, talk away, Seth. How's your wife? I don't know if he said that, but he should have said that. Um, so that's the setup for the match. Solid cheeseburger match. And then, um, again, it's a lot of backstage stuff. Uh, Usos wait for Edge. Very patient. Patient! And Uso must have. Drink less, should he? <laughs> Powerful in the force. Usos are not. Watch a bunch of Star Wars stuff, too. Star Wars and Aliens. Jeez, besides Aliens. I guess every movie has this bad one. I'll tell you what. Those are two classic. And then Star Trek. Live long and prosper. So, yeah. Um... Usos wait for Edge. One Uso says, "Patience." Uh, Seth and gives Charlie or Kayla an unwanted hug. Seth, you just have a new baby child in your family. What's Becky gonna think? Hey Becky, I'm single. Okay, if you need a, if you need your own hug. Yeah, what would Becky think? Um, not approve. Yeah, to make fun of Roman. There was some guy in the background wearing white. I had no idea who that was. Then we had a Otis and Chad Gable kind of promo thing. I don't know. We'll see where this goes. They might take on the Mysterios eventually. We'll see what happens. And then, and I'm like, really? Like, there were three matches. Unless I really missed something. I don't think I missed that much. I mean, did have to shower. I did have to finish cooking pizza. That doesn't take that long, though, just to cut a pizza. If, if, if that was the match, that sucked. But yeah, Edge, um, the last 12 minutes, Roman Reigns comes out. Usos head to ring. Kind of, uh, Roman Reigns kind of eyes him down. Edge and Roman Reigns trades blows. The Mysterious show up, jump the Usos. I have a feeling that this is going to set up for a holla, holla, holla player. We're going to have a three-man match. The champ versus the champ and his cousins versus the ch champs versus challengers. Might as well be. So you'll have Roman Reigns and the Usos taking on Edge and the Mysterios probably next week as the go-home show. And this time it's Jay's turn to be stuck in the crossface. And... Wow, that was a terribly uneventful SmackDown. That's not good. So yeah, I, I give SmackDown this time a ham sandwich. So with that being said, a little bit about uh, news and notes this week. So let me take a look at my calendar here. Get my calendar out. So Monday... Even though I'm working, I'm going to do a review of Raw. So I'll do that probably Tuesday. Probably get that done Tuesday morning-ish. I don't know. We'll see. Tuesday, I'm not watching NXT because I have to work that night. And I have to go hobo. Wednesday, I'm up in the air. I might do an AEW review. We'll see. I have to go grocery shopping. I might be heading up towards... I might be heading up the hill. Oh, yeah, my one coworker says, yeah, I went down to Connecticut. No, no, you went up to Connecticut. Connecticut's north of Florida. But, um, yeah, I might be heading up the hill to Jacksonville there Wednesday. Go check on a friend after doing my grocery shopping. This is Slime Rosary Week. So they're just having, like, the, the best of impact. So there's nothing to watch Thursday. Thursday, however... I'll be putting out my prediction videos. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do two of them separately or if I'll, or if I'll invite some people such as Dr. Tom. Um, maybe that, that freak broken Tom. 
or um, El Vagabundo. Heck, I could I could even ask the Techno Blue Ranger to show up do the show. I guess if I really wanted to. I don't know. We'll see. So that'll be Thursday, Friday. I will get to a SmackDown review Saturday night is going to be Slammiversary. I do have to work for part of it, so I'll probably catch definitely the second two thirds of it. I can always like check out stuff later. I have to find because YouTube's been down. I have to figure out how I can watch Time Verse. I know there's a couple questionable websites I use. But, yeah. Um, and then Sunday is going to be Money in the Bank. I'll probably be working that day. But I'll be able to catch most of Money in the Bank. I'll see the important stuff. And that'll lead into the following week. Um... And that has yet to be determined. So I'd like to thank everyone. Yes, folks, it is I, the one, the only Hobo Tom. I'm back again. Let's see, I can get, I can take off a nice wrestling T-shirt. This is how I normally look. Got my old nice comfy uh, tank top on. Show you the way I am when I'm relaxing. But yes. So this is a second bonus episode, and this is the, as you can tell, this is Cooking with a Hobo. And I know I forgot to put it on. Normally I make a video of this. This, like, this whole process takes way too long. I'm going to walk you through some parts of it. And you kind of get to see, like, pictures of stuff. So, yeah, it's all good stuff. Uh, for the 4th of, the, 4th of July, I had a most delicious steak. And the first thing with any steak is that, well, because I was lazy, I got my steak a while ago when I had a pile of money and I had no idea what to do with it. So I figured I'd get myself a big old fat pound, almost two pounds of beef right here. And the first thing you have to do, you have to take it out of the freezer and let it thaw off. Now, because I come, from, I hail from the northern states, and originally being from Michigan, let's make sure I'm not sinking too far. Oh, I'm doing good. Um, I don't know what these idiot southerners think. I was talking to one friend, and she's like, yeah, you want to marinate your steak. No, no, no. Never marinate red meat, folks. It's, it's, it's criminal. If you do, it's because it's just the worst part of meat imaginable, and you have to hide the flavor of the meat. What you want to do, you actually want to dry rub it, and then put it, and then salt it. You want to air dry your meat first. Now, what air drying your meat actually does, people think, oh, but it's going to get bacteria. No. If you put it in a bowl, if you put it, um, I like to put it in like one of the veggie trays in my refrigerator, mainly because I don't have that many veggies in there, but it's, nothing's going to grow. I mean, don't let it sit there for like a month. That's stupid. But because there's actually salt and you can probably see like all this grainy stuff at the bottom, that's actually pretzel salt that I save from pretzels. That actually takes out all the moisture. Bacteria and stuff cannot grow without water. So... What I did is that, oh, I don't remember that, it's okay. So again, if you're taking out all the, all the moisture out of the steak, you're doing two things. One, you're actually naturally breaking down the connective tissue in the steak. And it's gonna change color because you're taking out all the water and you're just really leaving the proteins. And then after really like just a day or two, it looks like this. Then you take that perfectly seasoned. Again, um, on that steak, I think it's just going to be some salt, pepper, a little hint of garlic powder. And actually, I think you use like nature seasons, um, season, uh, not the seasoning salt, but just nature seasoning again. Salt, pepper, um, gar a little, um, has garlic powder in there. 
white pepper, Himalayan salt, and probably a couple other like very basic spices. Just put that on top and on the bottom. Again, that's going to help draw out the moisture. And you can see where it's nice and, and red. That means it's perfect. It's good to go. And then you put it on the grill. Um, generally, a quick rule of thumb is that for every pound of meat, you want to cook it for about 20 minutes, roughly. Um, remember, the drying process is going to take off some of the moisture. So you do not want to have too much you don't want to have too much missing so you have to so you have to realize if this is a, a pound and three quarters of meat you're losing a quarter of the weight and moisture so it's about a pound and a half so i honestly cook it for solid half hour and when it does oh, looks and you don't put it over direct flame either you always want to use that top rack you want that indirect heat half hour it's perfect And then the next important step is that you want your meat to rest. You want it, you want all the juices to actually be reabsorbed by the meat. So honestly, you just take it, wrap it in foil, let it sit for 15 minutes while you're cooking like french fries, or I think in this case I had some jalapeno poppers along the side. Let it rest, and it's not going to be a lot less bloody when you first cut it. That's because all that juice is being reabsorbed. And again, if you cooked it right, it turns this this nice perfectly pink part in the middle and then depending on your taste I like to pre-slice it I'm just lazy um, always again you need to choose the right white plate with red meat you always want to choose like a white plate really highlights the color and textures of the meat Then you have the finished product. In this picture, again, you have the slice perfectly cooked in the seasoned steak. The Pernod, a blue French, a version of the blue French. Um, this, I think I had, actually it's a more colorful drink. It's a very bright, very kind of milky, greenish blue color because Pernod is made of anise, does have aniseed and it leaches out, which means it goes from a clear liquid and it leaches out actually in water. It's not water, Funny thing is, it's, it's not water soil, but it leaches out. It's a milky color. Had that with some berry lemonade. Oh, so amazing did it taste. And of course, I had some dipping sauce for my steak and the jalapeno poppers. Perfect 4th of July meal. And you know what? I'd like to thank you guys, the audience, for I'm the one, the only hobo, Tom. And thank you for staying, staying with us. Um, amazing video for cooking with us.